Hi, I'm Matt. Uh, I'm a third year medical student at Deakin University uh, in Geelong. And today I'm going to be speaking to you about uh, my journey into medicine, um, what led me to choose to want to do it, sort of my academic pathway to get myself there. Um, maybe some things that I, I wish I sort of knew prior to med school and so maybe some advice, um, I guess more broadly just about medical school and sort of, sort of how it is. So a little bit about, about me before I talk at you guys. Um, I grew up in a small rural city uh, called Warrnambool. It's about three and a half hours away um, by, by car from Melbourne. Um, so for those who are familiar, it's not big news, but for those overseas or anyone who's watching it isn't familiar, it was a, um, a fair way from, from what were the big smoke. Um, I spent a lot of time as a kid uh, playing sports, playing outdoors, um, sort of when you're out in the country, sort of dip your toes in a bit of everything. Um, so a bit of basketball, sport, tennis, cricket, a lot. Um, I moved to Geelong when I was in early high school um, and I'm currently living in Geelong whilst at medical school after um, moving back here after doing a stint um, at the university in Melbourne. Um, so I guess my medical journey so far sort of began in 2014 when I got accepted into the Bachelor of Biomedical Science at Monash. Um, I was lucky enough to get an ATAR high enough for an entry score um, to get in there um, and started my bachelor's there and finished in 2017. Um, so in 2017 I started the GAMSAT, um, I was lucky to only sit at once um, and got accepted in medical, the Deakin Medical School in November of 2017. Um, and currently I'm in MD3, so I'm in my third year at Geelong uh, Clinical School, so it's at Barwon Health Hospital um, in the centre of Geelong. So I guess the main reason for this uh, video is to speak about less about sort of um, what medical school is, how it's structured, what you sort of do, but more around the whys, um, about um, finding out a why about individually about why you want to do medicine. Um, for me, this is a pretty of a, a long-winded process, and if for some people it's a big epiphany, I know some people who they said that at a moment, they were like, yeah, I, I want to do um, medicine. Mine was sort of a bit more long-winded over a course of many, many years. Um, I guess I always had a passion for problem solving. Um, when I was a bit younger, seven or eight years old, I always used to get math books um, and just run through the problems there because I always liked to get myself to an answer. Um, medicine's a lot like that. There's, there's typically an answer to a problem. Um, I guess aside from that, there's a, a bit of an art to medicine in that there's um, it's not just the, the medical science and things that you work with, it's more about the art of having a bedside manner with a patient and getting to know them and speaking with them. Um, and I think that's really important. It was something that I really enjoyed growing up was interacting with people in anything, any place, like a football club or a career club or somewhere where I was able to get some interaction with people. I always really thrived in that environment. Um, so medicine also fit that criteria, which was really good. Um, I guess going into late high school, um, sort of doing biology and chemistry and some of the sciences, I really found a love for the human body and its complexities. Um, and I guess in doing that, it was really, um, everything sort of came together as a medicine might be a potential career path. Um, and lastly, and probably most importantly, was it was its uh, impacts it's had on my own life. Um, so in terms of speaking around that, we... My family's always been quite involved in the medical field, not from the, the fact of any families being doctors or anything, but I've got a disabled younger brother. Um, he's got autism and an acquired brain injury from an accident that he had when he was quite young. Um, I guess from that you sort of see from early day one, so when I was about five years old, he sort of got exposed to the medical field very early and sort of what they were doing for him and what they were doing for the family and sort of looked up to these guys as like these big superheroes. So I guess from, from the ages of five up until sort of now, I've always sort of put them always in really high regard. Um, and I always had it in the back of my mind, it was something I wanted to do, but then sort of having that passion grow over many years um, culminated into me deciding in my late high school that it was really something I wanted to strive for. So I guess I've got to speak about the pros and cons of medical school. Um, it, I get to do what I love. It's one of the big pros and it's probably the reason that keeps me going um, most of the time. Um, you meet like-minded people, which provide really great support networks for you. You get in this sort of, you do get tend to get in a bit of a med bubble, um, but all these people are going through the same stuff as you are, all the pressures. Um, so they're always really good to sort of lean your, yeah, um, have a good shoulder to lean on, I guess, in times when you need them. And it's a really stimulating environment. No one day is the same. Um, 
you're when you're going under the wards every day. I don't know which patients I'm seeing, what conditions I've got. I, you can never be prepared to uh, to actually know what you need to know when you walk into the hospital as a student. Um, it's really stimulating. It really stimulates growth and learning, and um, it's really exciting being able to go in every day. And it never, it never really gets stale. Um, the cons is, like I said, before you get into a bit of a med bubble, it does sort of consume you um, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. It's med school, med school, med school. Um, you break to eat, but even when you're eating, you're still maybe flicking through your notes or something. You're still in the med school brain. Um, and you sort of get to a point where anyone that you speak to um, ends up being either a medical student or a doctor. Um, and then anyone you speak to outside of that, they want to know how medical school is going. So it, it becomes everything that you, you sort of are, and it sort of takes up the majority of your identity, um, which for some people is okay. But for me, I, I had always had a, I tried to have an identity outside of it, and I try to maintain... Um, I guess some sense of separation between my medical school and also my life outside of it with some friends from high school and all that, all that sort of stuff. Um, but you do need to make sacrifices in order to make it through. Um, so there's a lot of times, a lot of dinners or a lot of birthday parties or stuff where typically when I was a bit younger I would have gone out. Um, medical schools sort of meant that I had to stay in um, and sort of put the hard yards in and do the work to make sure that I get myself through it. Which in, in the grand scheme of things isn't that hard of a decision to make because um, medicine is what I want to do, but it does it does put um, yourself at a loss in terms of other relationships outside of outside of your medical school. So sometimes family or friends who um, don't quite understand the pressures that you're under, and they can, you can put a bit of a strain there. So that is something that um, needs to be put into consideration, I guess, and something that needs to be managed while you're trying to do your medical schooling. Um, but I guess in terms of all of that, like there's a few cons and there's things like there's in the, again the scheme of things that the the token things that you've just sort of got to deal with. Um, but I guess you sort of get this reward of in medicine of being able to do what you want to do. Um, it's it's such a it, unlike any other business. You sort of start at the base of a tree and you sort of work your way out. Um, um, and where it, me still being a student, I'm still at the base of that tree. Still have a long way to go in terms of what what I want to do, where I can go, um, which is really quite exciting. But I guess in terms of that, I know there's a lot of hard work to go. Um, there will always will, will be a lot of hard work to go. It's a forever learning kind of job. But you you want to work harder um, when you enjoy what you're doing. Um, so uh, I'll, in the next slide, I'll speak about um, sort of the realities of med school and sort of how much work you actually have to do. But in terms of what work you are doing, you tend to enjoy it. And a lot of days it is like banging your head up against a brick wall. Um, but... You, you you get through it like you, you sort of you, you can sort of see the light and go no I'm, I'm working for a purpose here um and that purpose i guess sort of is that i know that i'm still i'm working to help people i'm working to um, be able to walk into a hospital with adequate knowledge enough to go in and go yep i know how to solve your problem um but it's also a sort of an inner sort of goal and in a working in a goal in myself that i've always had like i spoke about this journey of medicine's not just been a, a three four year thing it's been since i was five years old so that five-year-old kid there on the scooter um it, me being able to work hard now has enabled that kid's dream to come true i guess um and it's sort of it's sort of rewarding to sort of know that you've you've worked hard over all these years and there's something you always want, innately wanted to do when you were very young and you've been able to achieve that through a lot of hard work. Um, it sort of drives you to keep on going, going, you know, like we, we're, we're doing well here. And I think there's there's always, everyone in med school's got that inner drive. It's not just myself. It is everyone has got their own story, their own drive, their own reasons. Um, and I think it's really important just to not, um, not pin yourself down and to... Um, other people's reasonings or trying to get like be told why you should be going doing the medicine you should do medicine purely for the love of it all because it's um at the end of the day it is it can be quite taxing and you've got to realize that there's a reason why you're doing it um i guess lastly you just meet great people those other two pictures on the right hand side there um of all the people there they're just people they're a few of many that i've met over the over my course of doing med school um, and you get involved in a lot of great opportunities so this med mentor thing has been one of them we do other things at Deakin which have been really involved and you sort of get yourself involved there and it sort of takes your mind off medical school for a little bit um, it's nice to get involved and have positive impacts on other people outside of other direct impacts that you can have in the hospital setting so I guess lastly it's a bit of advice before getting into medical school it's not always as glorious as what it's painted out to be um, 
you sort of see on the TV shows of you know House Scrubs, Grey's Anatomy, a lot that it's all um, glorified and it's all all great and everything's all exciting and go 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 and um, some days it is, some days it really is. Like there the, some clinical experiences have been of you sort of standing on a ward, sort of just reading notes or something, and all of a sudden there's the, the beep in the wards have gone, and you've got to run off and go and perform CPR. Like that, there's sometimes that that's really um, it does happen like that, like it would. But I guess 99% of the time, it's you're in front of a computer, you're reading notes, you're typing notes, you're going through learning conditions, you're in the hospital, reading over notes, listening to consultants, talk to patients, you're not really having a lot of input. Um, you're sort of the fly on the wall. Um, you're just trying to soak up as much as you can. It's exciting to be on the wards, but it's you, you don't do a, a lot. Um, so... In terms of it's a it's a really hard long grind and that's one thing to keep in mind that it's not a it's it, the the whole glory of and the whole um, pedestal of being in medical school lasts for about a week and then you kind of realize oh, I've got a lot of work to do here um, and that starts to really hit home and that's when the the, the real hard work kicks in and it lasts and it, it doesn't stop um, so I guess again before you get in take some time to yourself take take some time for yourself sorry um, I remember uh, speaking to someone prior to getting in, and they were a first year medical student um, in Tasmania, and they they said to me when I was going through my holidays, I was going to do a lot of work for pre getting to prep for the game set and stuff, and they put their hand on my shoulder and said, just stop working and just relax, you'll be you'll be fine. Um, and at the time, I just took their didn't take their advice and just went and worked anyway. And um, looking back on it, I was silly. I should have gone and. Um, taking their advice and taking the break and because you don't get them once you're in medical school um so i think that's really important is to just take your breaks where you kind of know how to take care of yourself outside of med school um because that becomes really important to keep those routines while you're doing um while you're doing your schooling i guess these last two points here are f they're not they're not my words they've come from a um a, a poem that i've sort of always had in front of me um whether it be up on the mirror in my house um, in my bathroom or um, hanging up in my bedroom or somewhere, it's always been in front of me and there's two quotes from it. It sort of, it helps to, again, ground myself and take myself out of the stresses of medical school. And I guess these two quotes from it are, are quite pertinent. It's at once saying that sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind, the race is long and in the end it's only with yourself. So I guess in terms of how that pertains to medical school is that it's a long slog, it's a really hard slog. Um, it can be quite lonely at times. Um, you have got support networks around you for these people, but when you're, you're sitting at home in front of your computer and there's everyone else around you who's not in the medical field and they sort you sort of you're in your own little bubble. Um, so just keep that in mind. And you, some you know you go to you compare yourself to people at medical school. Like I still and for a long time thought that um, I was an administrative area that I got let in on the back of someone screwing their job up and let me in because um, all the people that were in medical school are all geniuses and they're all great at what they do um and sometimes you feel like you're ahead like you've done a really good solid work of a, um, on a particular condition and it comes up the next day and you you're the one that looks like you're in the know even though you've only just read about it so i guess you're not competing with anyone else you're sort of trying to better yourself and that's something to keep in mind um and secondly sort of do one thing every day that scares you you'll always do this on the wards someone will always ask you to do something and you're not sure how to do it like go make a phone call to someone you don't know or ask for a particular image um, like an ultrasound screen to get organized or get an actual image or a CT image to get transferred from hospital to hospital and call that hospital it's quite it was quite daunting um, but if you do sort of these things beforehand and sort of get into the mindset of just doing things and putting yourself out of your comfort zone um, you'll do that a lot in medicine so um, you see you can sort of get used to used to doing that so I think those two quotes there work work well um, in terms of I guess just yeah, grounding yourself in medical school because it's again um, the motivations behind it are more important I think than looking at the cons and looking at all the hard work. There's a there's a big greater picture here, and you are helping people. Um, so that's the end of my talk. Thank you guys, um, and we hope to see you at Deakin.